to what goes on within a traditional development team is uh, their development team, they build, they, they, they test, they package the application, and they ship everything to the operation team. So the operations team, the main aim is to have this ready for customers to use. So they deploy this uh, so that can, customer can go ahead and use it. But what goes on be, between them is uh, sometimes they are, they are missing in terms of communication, instruction are not clear. So this is when we have the wall of confusion. So what happens is uh, sometimes when developers are using a latest feature and communications are not flown to the operations team, uh, when this goes on, the application would not work as intended in production and customer support would be receiving complaints from customers saying that the performance is not good or the application is not behaving as intended. Uh, one good example might be that developers are using a resource uh, as an example, let's say service bus within the whole architecture and operations team wasn't at all of this. So what happens is the application is now relying on something which does not exist in production and nothing works correctly. So this is when you, this is when we, we want to really look into the DevOps piece, which really brings and bridge, bridges the gap between these two. Security, a cloud advocate of uh, manager at Microsoft. The DevOps is the union of people, process, and product to enable the continuous delivery of value to our end user. So in here, people is uh, people are mainly the developers, the operations team. Process is what you do from the beginning to the end, meaning uh, from developers building the code, QA testing the code, for them packaging everything, to operations team, uh, deploying the code to their resources, whether on prime or in the cloud. Uh, and the product here itself is the product because you want to bring the product together as part of the whole pro process and not something which sits as an artifact on a repo somewhere. Uh, the main aim why you want this to be achieved is because you want to bring value to your product, to your end user. Without end user, there's no product and your business ain't going to flourish. Some more uh, quotes about this. So uh, as I mentioned, right, so development is operations collaboration uh, with development. Uh, we want them to collaborate so that, you know, everything works together side by side. Uh, DevOps is also creating infrastructure as good. So as I mentioned, if developers are using a new feature as a service bus, but operations are not told anything about it, so nothing would work. So you want to make sure your infrastructure is being checked in as you could within your repo. So whoever's working on the branch or in, on the if forking your repo or anything, they are making sure they are running the latest infrastructure as well for your application. DevOps is also using automation. No one wants to do these boring tasks again and again. Uh, Developers on humans to QA humans too, they might be missing out on a nice piece, meaning some 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 a recommended piece, which is testing, uh, which is you know security testing and all these type of testing. So we want we want to make sure that we are automating the the boring piece so that the machine are doing it for us and developers are mainly focusing on what they do best, which is writing code. Uh, DevOps is also a small deployment because when you think about the agile concept. We want to make sure that we deploy, we listen to feedback from our customers, and then we go back to the board and start again. We fix whatever was not correct, and we improve on what is, what is good already. DevOps is also monitoring, planning, and starting over, because it's, it's, a, it's a whole uh, in an infinite loop sort of thing. So once you're done with your deployment, you monitor your application, you plan again and start over, because uh, we, we want to keep on running everything in iteration. So if you want to put this in a nice diagram, so you have this DevOps process where we all start with the planning piece, right? So we plan what to do. We do it from the develop, develop piece. Uh, we build the application, uh, we package it, we test it, we release it to our resource. Uh, then once you're done, we configure it, we monitor what, what, was what was deployed, and then we plan again, we start over. So this diagram is more of an Azure DevOps uh, perspective Azure DevOps, meaning the solution itself, as you can. No, okay, so enough with all the boring stuff. Uh, let's get some demo going. Uh, as I mentioned, we always start with 
uh, with some, some sort of boats writer. I have two work items to use a story assigned to me, but the first one is create pipeline. So let me go ahead and put this one on active. We get this one going. Uh, in here, I have my Visual Studio code. Uh, I have
so what happens here is uh, we are we are parsing the .NET restore. So the we are saying restore the project, and then once the restore has been done, we go ahead and build it. So let's take a look at, at the pipeline. It has been completed already. Uh, in here, we have different steps now. We have the restore steps, which is restoring all the dependencies, all the NuGet packages. And once this one is done, we go ahead and perform the build. Why we have it split in two is uh, because of we want to be able to say, right, restore all dependencies for all my projects. In this case, we have only one, but if you have multiple projects in there, so it will restore all dependencies for all your projects. And then you go ahead and build it. So in here, the build is uh, anything uh, CS project, so it will build all the project, but you can you can have uh, other scenarios as we will have uh, later on in this, uh, in this demo. So at this point, we are good. Uh, if, we, if, if I bring back the, uh, this slide, so we have the plan good. We, we sort of start with the develop piece. Everything looks good. So we are, we are almost done with the integration piece because we, are, we were able to build our application uh, on the cloud uh, using Azure DevOps. So the next piece we want to do now is package it because we want to package it so that we can leverage it uh, multiple places. You, you can go ahead and use it to test on a separate VM. Uh, you can uh, use it to uh, to test your application on, on a locally hosted uh, agent. So you might be using uh, different. Uh, sorry, you might be using uh, different uh, uh, different machines, different different ways that you can you know, to can test. So what we want to do now is let's go ahead and. Uh, look into the next piece, which is packaging it. So for the package my piece, uh, what, what? Right. let me push this and then we can we can look at, look into the same thing together. Okay. So what we are doing now is we are saying right after building the application, we want to go ahead and publish it. So we want to publish it in a way that we have something that we can use further on. Same thing once again, the .NET Core CLI. Uh, we're going to be using a lot of this anyway. Uh, so we are saying publish it, publish uh, the project that we have. Uh, don't build it because we built it previously. Uh, that's the release configuration. And the output, we want, the, we want all the binaries to be, to be at this point uh, on, on this directory. And once everything is good, this is what we do next is we sort of uh, upload the upload the uh, the uh, the package. So let's go back to this one. Uh, it, uh, let me compare to the previous one. If you compare to the previous one, it says artifacts zero artifacts. That means uh, this this build this pipeline did not have any artifacts at that time. So what we did now is we added the publish artifact. You can see this one is one. So the good thing out of it is of, on top of building uh, the pipeline, of the, uh, on top of building your application, uh, Azure DevOps should also make sure that you are ready, you can download it. So I can go ahead and download this on my local machine. I can go ahead and deploy this on my own without any issues. So at this point, it will work. So uh, Azure DevOps did some, some, some part of the heavy lifting for me. It built the application. I can go ahead and take this, deploy it myself. But we don't want to end, end there, right? So we want to we want to get things going. Uh, developers are humans too, so we all do errors. We all we all, all miss some of the boring piece, as I as I call it. So testing this project and another branch. Uh, it has a, uh, another another project here. So that's the test project that I have. Uh, in here, it's uh, asking for. Uh, so the test is uh, look for 10 days of forecasted weather forecast, but we know it's already five as we had previously in, in, the, in, the, in the UI and the website. I know this one will fail. So let me go ahead and, and, and add this piece to the YAML, then we can look into it, why it's building, why it's testing. So after, after packaging, we want to go ahead and do some testing. Uh, Let me do this, push it, and then I'll show you 
uh, share the demo. So what we are doing here is we are saying uh, after packaging, after everything looks good, let's go ahead and do some testing. So we are using the .NET Core CLI once again. We are saying test it, uh, don't build it or anything, but now use any any project that has the pattern .test.cs project within our repo. So that's basically this one, as you can see, uh, this one, the test.cs project. So it's it will run the test for this. So if I go ahead and 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 do some testing, I can I can do the same thing locally. So I'm saying .NET test configuration release. I know it will fail because of because of the uh, it is expecting ten days as uh, ten days for the uh, amount of forecasted days, but only five is currently being returned. So it won't work, and we want the same behavior to be on our on our Azure pipeline. If someone made a mistake unintentionally, we don't want this to affect the whole build, to affect the whole repo. This is when we want it to fail. As you can see, it failed in here. It tells me 0% post. I didn't do anything extra rather than add the YAML piece for testing. So the same, same uh, behavior is being, is being shown here. Expected 10 days, but only five was provided in terms of the days. If I look further under, under this, you will see that now it's saying 0%. Previously it was get started, but now it's saying 0% post. I can dive into it and look at the code and see uh, what was what was paused. I can see all the information. It tells me exactly where it failed. Uh, expected was 10 days, but only five was provided. It's, it's, it's what we are looking for. Uh, so let's go ahead and fix this, and then we can try the same thing again. So to fix this, well, I'm not going to change the test. Instead, I'm going to change the the amount of days which is being provided. So I know it was 10 previously, but let's change it to uh, sorry five previously. I changed it to 10. So I'm going to say I fixed the code. I commit this, and then I push it. If I run the same thing again that I ran previously, now it should work. Hopefully. Perfect, fine, it works without any issues. But we are looking uh, at this exact same behavior on the pipeline. So right now it's running. Let's take a look at it while it's running. So we want, we want this to happen. The reason is uh, sometimes you might want to add some PR check <clears throat> while you're you, you, you are doing your pull request. So if someone implemented a bug unintentionally, we want it to stop right there and not go ahead and merge the not merge the and don't merge the uh, problematic branch onto your master. Then your master will be will be dirty, will be sort of infected. So you have to fix the bug again for for all your developers to use. <clears throat> so while this is building, uh, let's go ahead and and you, you you can take a look in here, right? So in here it should shows it should show you uh, the amount of tests uh, completed. Might take a while to uh, to run. A couple of more seconds, and we should be done. So running the test, one of one passed, perfect, without any issues. It's good. Now we are hundred percent covered in terms of our testing. We are good, hundred hundred percent passed. Well, no no errors in here. If we get into pass test, perfect. At this point, we are happy. We are good. Our pipeline have some testing. So we're looking into the, the process here once again. So we're up to this point. The pipeline now is able to test our application upon pushing the code to it. The next piece is we need we need and, and we want to go ahead and do some release. But right now, as as you see, uh, if we look in the into the pipeline piece, we have only one stage. One stage is boring because that's sort of one one line. Uh, we want to be able to add uh, steps where users can go ahead and approve it or the engineers can go ahead and approve it. So once it's built, we want to be able to say, go ahead and and do some deployment on, on multiple environments. So let's go ahead and uh, look into the this one. So it, the exact same branch right has been uh, duplicated. Uh, the YAML is still the same thing. 
So what we want to do is we want to add multiple staging rather than right now we have only one stage which is which is doing everything. So we want to say I want one stage for build and another stage for deployment for release. You can have multiple stages for releasing to staging environment, releasing to test, uh, release to production. You also want to say uh, release to uh, or, or maybe doing some testing on multiple on multiple VMs. So I'm going ahead, going ahead and remove the. Uh, the pool here because I don't want a pool for uh, for my whole uh, for my whole pipeline. I want to add staging instead. So I'm adding a stage. So I'm saying this stage in here is called build. So build application on the Ubuntu latest, pretty much the same thing. But this one is this VM is for this stage. But let me indent indent this. Perfect indented and. So this one in here, I'm adding an extra step. Let me push this and then we can look into this together. OK, so what we are doing here is we are saying add multiple stages. You can hear, as you can see in here, we have stage build. So if I collapse this, I have another stage which is called deploy. This one is is uh, responsible for all the building of the application, and this one we want it to be responsible for all the releases. Uh, what this one will do is it will go ahead download the build that has been uploaded here. I mean the artifact. So in here we are we are uploading the artifact here, and at the end we want we are downloading the artifact. So we download the current artifact, which is called drop. Uh, but we should see we should see multiple stages. So let's look into this one, the latest one. As you can see, we have two stages. The reason we have two stages is, uh, as I mentioned, we have build here. So once we're done building it, uh, we want to be able to run this on another VM for the release. You can also add some checks in between. You can say really build application, uh, release this to my staging environment. Uh, there's a check that goes on after the release to the a staging environment where you want to make sure everything is good before you move on to releasing to prod. So you want to add a manual intervention to make sure that someone is validating, is doing some sanity check, uh, some smoke testing before we go ahead and flip the switch and push it to prod. So in here, uh, well, the exact same step we had previously, everything was was deployed, uh, sorry, was built and it was downloaded, but it, it ends in here. So. We don't want it to end in here. We want to do further step to it. Uh, as I mentioned, we want to be able to go ahead and release this uh, at some point to, to the cloud. But in here, it, it ends right there. But we we want to take the extra step. So let me change this to uh, another another branch. So this branch, it has something uh, separate to this. Uh, let me go ahead and add the the next snippet to this, and then I'll walk you through. Uh, this one is interesting. Uh, it has, uh, as I mentioned previously, we need to check in our infrastructure as good to make sure it, it's checking. Uh, let me let me push this. It might take a while to to run. So while this is running, uh, I'll walk you through this. Uh, so what this one does is, uh, well, let me show you the file first. Let me collapse this. We have two extra files. Uh, we have a uh, we have two JSON files. So these are Azure ARM resources or Azure Resource Management files. So th it defines what what is needed and what has to be built. When you run this against Azure, against your subscription, so what goes on behind this is uh, it will go ahead and create the resources for you on the fly. In here, what what is uh, what is being created is uh, we have a website that will be created. Uh, we have uh, a server form or, or as we call it, uh, service plan. So this will be created, and we have a application inside that will be deployed.
Entry, I have a resource group already created, and that's a template URI. Uh, it's currently it's the same thing, except that it's on it's the raw link of the of, of the file uh, from GitHub. So uh, if I click on this, I open this in my browser. So that's the exact same file I have, except that the pipeline will be able to pull this and run this for me. So I'm I'm providing uh, both the file and the uh, and the parameters so that it will it will works together. Let's look at, at this. So perfect, it runs. It, once again, it built my application. Once the application was built, it run the PowerShell uh, step, which is building my resources. So if uh, that's my dev conf twenty twenty uh, configuration uh, resource group. So if if I refresh this, I should be able to see all my resources down, which was added for me by my pipeline. If I open this website, let's take a look at the URL for the website and open this. Okay. Spinning up probably for the first time might take a while. Perfect. The website is up and running, but that's not our that's not our project that I showed you. So for for us to be able to to get the web to get the project there, we have the artifact, and now we have the website. The link is we need to be able to get the uh, to get the artifact deployed to our website. Uh, this is very easy. We have another step for this. So it's called the uh, Azure Web App. So let me go ahead and push this. Uh, Push this. So what what we are stating the the pipeline to do is we are saying once you're done with creation of the resource at this point, go ahead deploy this. So what is being deployed here is the DevConf 2020 uh, zip file. So this is the package that we are downloading here, which we are uploading on the build step. We are saying download this, upload this to our application or our website, which is called DevConf 2020. It's a web app and use the DevConf 2020 Azure uh, service connection for the authentication against my Azure subscription. So once this is done, it will, the application will be deployed. So you might be asking, right, so we created the, the uh, website, I mean, with the resources already, the website, the application inside, the app service and so on. Why are we running this again? The reason we want to run this again is uh, this is incremental. So if I'm saying create three resources for me, A, B, and C, and now in the latest change I made, I'm saying now go ahead, create resource D. So what it will do, it will verify against A, B, C, what is needed for me to be able to get D. So it will say D is missing at D. So this is what, I, this is what it will do. It will only add D for me, not, not destroy everything, create everything again. It will only add the extra missing piece, which is, which is D. Let's look at the pipeline and see what, what's going on. A build has been completed. So let's see what was done. So yeah, exact same thing was done, right? So let's wait for, for it to finalize and move on to the deploy piece. This might take a while because it's authenticating against Azure and so on for, for the deployment piece. Let's refresh it to make sure it's running. Okay, it's it is running. It is currently queuing, waiting for an agent to be available. Since we are ever using everything from the cloud, so it might take a while. Uh, let me show you the the zip file that I'm, I'm mentioning here in my YAML. Uh, I'm mentioning a zip file. So as you can see from here, from the download piece, um, not sure how much you can see there, but there's the zip file. So the devconf2020, uh, sorry, in this one, that's the zip file we were, we're looking for. That's the zip file we want to use to deploy to our application. So go back to the, the one which is currently running. So perfect. I mean, it went on this one. It realized that nothing had to be done. Everything looks good. And it skipped to the next piece, which is running the Azure Web App uh, deploying the Azure Web App. So that's the website I had previously. So if I hit on refresh, 
might take a while to load once again because it, it's not contents new binaries. Perfect. Looks good. So that's the website I showed you previously, the Hello World. That's the Blazor application. The counter works great. Uh, the fetch data looks good. We don't have the uh, five days now. We have the 10 days. Hey, hit refresh, I'm not sure. You're still deploying. Okay, it might take a while. I'm not sure why why this one decided that it has to stop running. But we get back to this later on. At least the website has been deployed, everything looks good. Let's let's wait for it to, to be back up. Okay, perfect, it's back up. Azure was doing its things in the background. So we have the 10 days compared to five days because our parsing uh our, our, our test says that it has to have 10 days for it to pass. Looks good. So let, let's let's just bring back the dev process. So at this point, we, we can say that, yeah, we are almost here. We did release the application already. Say so every, everything looks good, everything works. But we want to go ahead and configure, uh, configure it as well because sometimes only dipping the application does not end there. We want to go ahead and deploy this. So the deployment we want to do next is we want to go ahead and, and Sorry, the configuration we want to do is we want to go ahead and configure this, the application, to use the application inside. Even though we are mentioning to use it, but you know, just for the sake of the, of the demo, we just want to show how you can perform configuration uh, on the fly for your project. For this, uh, as you can see in here, I have my instrumentation key. I just I don't want this in my pipeline. I want this uh, in a library. So I go ahead and click on library. Uh, create a variable group, uh, call this telemetry. Uh, I'm saying allow this key to be used across uh, all the pipelines. I go ahead and use uh, this one. That's the key I want to use. And the value I want is, is this instrumentation key. That's the one, save it. Perfect. Now, what we want to do is we want to modify the YAML file and say, Go ahead and use uh, and use the uh, the key uh, in uh, as part of our project. Uh, this project is a little bit different. Uh, and the started start up uh, start up the CS file. We have uh, application uh, inside key that we are using. Uh, so we are saying that use the application inside key uh, from the settings uh, for the project. And we are also have uh, a reference here. So this way, the application is sort of connected to uh, the application insight. So we can go to the application insight and and see uh, anything around it. So so for this, let me go ahead and add another snippet. So the snippet is we are saying that use variables from the group which is called telemetry. That's the one we just created, and we want to go ahead and perform configuration. So the configuration in here is. So let me push this. So, okay. So what we are doing is the exact same step that we had, uh, except we are saying as part of this, uh, for the website, we have the app settings on the website under the configuration. What we are doing is we are adding this. So if it doesn't exist, please add it. If it exists already, please update it with the with the uh, telemetry key that that we have applied, that we have supplied into the into the variables into here. So if we go back to uh, to my Azure, so that's my application inside. Uh, if we go into live metrics, as you can see. Uh, so if you try to load it, probably won't because the application does not have the SDK installed for application inside to connect to uh, to the uh, to, to the to the website. And if I go into the website, what we are mainly looking for, if you click on the configuration for your website, you have a bunch of uh, keys and connection string. In here, we have one already, which has already been added for us as part of the resource creation. But what we are doing is we are saying that's fine please go ahead just add it again because we just want to test it again so click on pipeline and see what it's doing so build has been completed perfect 
it's currently doing the deployment. So creation of the uh, Azure resources. So the in, I, uh, the uh, incremental deployment. So make sure everything looks good. Should be done in a couple of seconds. And then we we'll move on to the uh, application deployment. So in here, as you can see, the application deployment, it's currently deleting the website. So if I run this, it might tell me that the website is unavailable. Or if it is faster than me, then yeah, it was faster than me. So it deleted the application and, and, and uploaded the application again. So now it's running the uh, the configuration. So the configuration in here, if I refresh this, let me refresh the website and let me go back to my application insight. So if I go into live metrics, let me access this. So it's connecting to my to my website. Uh, let me refresh this couple of times. You want you just want to see the graph. See in here, we are doing monitoring, right? So we are doing live monitoring of our application why users are using it without affecting performance. So at this point, we are we're up to this. We're up to this, right? So we deploy the application, we configured it, we monitor the application, and then we start again over. So if we start again over. Let's go in the boards. So in here, I have the boards. My pipeline has been created. So let's assume I'm the manager of this project. I'm going to close it straight away. Uh, then let's now the next step, which has been assigned to me, is I need to change the wording. So everything looks great. I just build a pipeline for all the developers uh, on this project so they can leverage this. So now we have a new work item, which is change the wording. Uh, so for a great conference like this, we don't want Hello World. We want something which is more uh, custom, which is more significant uh, to this to this, uh, to this demo. So in here we have Hello World. So we want to change it to uh, Hello Dev Conf 2020. This is what we want to change it to. Uh, let me push this change wording. Let me push the change. So what we just did previously is we built the pipeline from scratch. Nothing was ex nothing existed, right? So we built the pipeline for the whole process. It's a one you did it only once for your project. What goes on behind it next is everyone's going to be leveraging this. Everyone will be will be able to tap into the power of automation, a type of power of DevOps for your project. So as a developer, I'm looking into my boards and see a work item assigned to me. I go to my Visual Studio Code, I make the change, I commit it, I push it to my repo. Uh, that's, all, that's all I have to do. That's all I have to worry about. Uh, the next thing that we go on is the pipeline will pick up, will we'll do all the necessary steps for me. So you go ahead, build the application in case I made any change. So it will go ahead, build it, uh, publish the artifact, test my application. Once it's done, it will go do my uh, Azure subscription, do the uh, resource check, create the resource, uh, uh, deploy the application. We can also have some UI testing if needed. On top of this, you can say, right, so deploy this to my staging environment. Once it's done, do some UI testing there. You can you can use Selenium or any of your preferred UI testing framework. Uh, test it. Once you're done with the, all the testing, make sure everything is good. Then someone just go verify all the test result. If everything looks great, then they go ahead and say, fine, promote this to production, and then we should be good. But let's go, the website's currently down because deployment is running. Take a few seconds for this to, for this to run. Website is being deployed. A few more seconds. Package deployment initiated. Perfect. Now it will go ahead and configure it for us. Uh, I mean, configure the uh, app settings for the application inside. So if I reload the website, go back to home. Perfect. So the website has been deployed for us with the wording as a developer. Going back to here, I say, fine, my job is done for the day. I put this back on resolve or put this back on close, meaning that's the end of, of the demo.
so everything looks great so far. So going back to this slide, uh, the whole flow was done. The whole flow was completed. Looks great. Now we just build a pipeline. The pipeline is ready for all the developers to use. They can go ahead and use the same thing. Uh, that's the demo which has been completed. So thank you, thank you all for for watching the demo. It was it was really nice having you here. Uh, please don't forget to leave a to leave feedback. And quick thing is, if you want to do the same thing again, you can just go ahead and grab this from my GitHub repo. Uh, it's devconf2020 underscore template. On the master branch, you will have a PDF for all the steps I did. Uh, yeah, that's that's gonna be it. And uh, getting big, this back to you guys, team. If you have uh, any Q Q and A in the, uh, we'll take uh, the the questions. Thank you, Wasim, for this uh, presentation. It was very very good explaining about the develop, uh, DevOps lifecycle also as well. If we have any question in, uh, if anybody has question on uh, the live stream, please comment uh, on the chat. I will take it to Wasim. I, I have a question actually. Um, uh, okay, for students watching who want a career in DevOps, what uh, path do you recommend? Um the career in DevOps, I would say, it's something uh, relatively new because uh, all, I mean, not not all companies nowadays are really embracing the DevOps from the cloud perspective. Uh, DevOps still is, I mean, mm -hmm. is present. Some companies are, are, are looking into it. Uh, I mean, so the next piece uh, for them is to try to understand what goes on behind it uh, from a developer perspective, from infrastructure perspective, either cloud or on-prem because uh, a DevOps uh, engineer is someone who understands how application works because you need to be able to understand what is a test project, what is a project in itself, but also you need to understand the resources behind it. How are all the applications interconnected? So you have the application on one side, you have the resource. So you need to understand how these merge together. Uh, so uh, the, the best advice to be is try to be sort of a jack, and, jack of all trade because this is what really brings, brings the developers to. Uh, brings brings the DevOps engineer uh, to the game. Okay, would would you say that uh, a DevOps is a mixture of uh, a system admin and a developer? Uh, what what uh, are the key differences between them? I would say not not really. System admin. Uh, well, the word system admin uh, is is very vague. I would say because uh, system admins are not only persons who take care of uh, of of releases of deploying application they also make sure everything is working as fine together i would say uh let's put it this way right so a devops is someone who sits between uh the developers and the system admin because developers write the code devops would be making sure that you know it, it's sort of a glue in between so you have the developers and the system admin devops in here to make sure communication works together so it's taking the uh, wherever the developers left off to make sure the application gets to the point that uh, where the system has been made sure the resources is working fine. So it makes sure that the it, it sort of brings the gap, it bridges the gap between these two resources. Okay, I have uh, received a few questions. PSC is asking, is, is asking if he needs to run some commands after the deploy, how can he do that? Uh, if you want to run some commands of the deploy, it all depends on uh, how you want to do it, right? And also your resources. Uh, if you're running this in the cloud, as an example, uh, as I had previously, I had the um, I had the PowerShell uh, the PowerShell step. So I'm not sure if you guys can still see my screen. Uh, let, let me show you this. Uh, let, let me show you this. Uh, so let me go into the YAML piece. So in here, uh, that's my, if you're talking about Azure, you have, you can use this. So, you, I mean, you can just go ahead and move this or duplicate this after at the end of your, of your app deployment. This is pure PowerShell module. Sorry, you can go ahead and say, uh, you can have a file sitting somewhere that you can say, right, so this is my PowerShell file that uh, I can just go ahead and execute. But for this case, I'm having an inline script. You can just go ahead and execute it. Uh, the same thing can, can, can be applied here. Uh, now, this is an Azure app settings. Uh, you can go ahead and just duplicate this to have this at the bottom of your screen. If you're using in the cloud, you can use Azure Cloud, Azure PowerShell, 
uh, it's pretty much the same thing as Azure Cloud Shell. Uh, if you're running this on prem, this would differ. So rather than Azure PowerShell, you can have just a PowerShell script with all your scripts in it uh, that you can leverage. If I want to show you the same thing from the pipeline perspective, so let's go ahead and look into this. Let me edit this. Uh, what I just showed you is sort of the YAML piece, but the same thing can be done. Let me change to the final one. Change, same thing can be done here. So I can just go ahead and say, uh, PowerShell as an, as an example. So you have a bunch of PowerShell. If uh, you're running this on Prime, so you might be using this. If you're using this in the cloud, this one's going to be the best one. So what you can do is, if you click on here, you can say file path or inline. Inline, you can write your own PowerShell script here. Or file path is if you have it in your repo somewhere that is accessible by the pipeline, you can just you can just add it here, add all your arguments. That's it. You just need to add it. So after the application has been deployed, it will automatically run the script for you. That's uh, that was great. It was great to have you in this conference, Wasim. Unfortunately, we are running out of time, and I think uh, yes, all the question has been answered. Uh, yeah, that's it's, it was great to have you here. Thank you, thank you. And if there are more questions that you, if someone might want to ask later yes. on, you have my Twitter handle. How can, how can they contact you? Okay. Uh, I mean, th there's my Twitter handle that they can reach out to me on. So I'm putting it back on the screen. So that's my Twitter handle. You can reach out to that's me. That's my Twitter handle. You can reach out to me on Twitter. Uh, I will definitely try to uh, get back to you as soon as I can. Uh, just to make sure everyone is up to the speed, uh, you can also uh, well reach uh, reach out to me on Twitter, uh, Facebook. You can you can search me, just ping me or anything. I I, I would be more than happy to to help you out, guys. Thank you.